Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy that you wanted to join me today because today we are going to talk about silicone. This was a material that was really requested for me to talk about because it is something that we are seeing more and more of in the sustainability community and the sustainability spectrum. A lot of sustainable shops, eco shops, are selling and promoting uh, silicone products as an alternative to plastic products and I guess it's got a lot of consumers, myself included, wondering what is silicone even and is it better than plastic? Is it plastic? What's up with that? And if it is sustainable, how is it sustainable? And like, what's the tea on silicone? So that is why I'm here today to talk to you about silicone. Yeah. As always, you can find the script to this video on my blog. So if you would rather read it rather than, you know, listen to it, you can go and do that. The sources are also in the description. So if you are interested in checking out where I'm getting my information from or learning more for yourself, you can go and do that as well. It's all in the description. Okay. Let's get started. Silicone is normally described as belonging to the rubber family. And rubber in its purest form, also known as latex, comes from the rubber tree. With this natural rubber as a starting point, anything that is not from this natural substance is known as a synthetic, aka a man-made product. And synthetics are not necessarily a bad thing in and of itself. It simply just means that this thing doesn't grow on trees. Stuff like tensile or rayon are, for instance, synthetic fabrics, although they are derived from wood fabric. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that this is something that's super super bad. It, yeah, it just means that it's not a naturally occurring, you cannot go out and find it in nature, but you sort of need to give it a little push for it to get there. Does that make sense? So silicone is a synthetic because silicone is not something that we see naturally occurring in nature. Synthetics are made by mixing various materials together and that becomes a synthetic polymer. Poly meaning many or mixed and a polymer can be many many different things um so it's not again it's not inherently bad but a lot of plastics all plastics are polymers but not all polymers are plastic that's why you will often see a lot of plastic they are named something with poly because that refers to this specific substance or this compound of substances the most common description of a polymer is a substance consisting of very large molecules or macromolecules composed of many repeating subunits if a polymer has elastic properties so if it's really stretchy or really bendy it's also called an elastomer and silicone is a synthetic elastomer because one of silicone's main qualities is that it is super, super stretchy and also more stretchy than plastic. Silicone itself is made out of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and silicon. Note a very important thing here is that silicon, an ingredient in silicone, is not spelled completely the same. Silicon without an E is an element that is also present on the periodic table. So it's silicon and silicone is not the same thing. It's needlessly confusing. The ingredient silicon then is derived from silica, which is also known as sand. The sand that's used to make silicon, to make silicone, <laughs> is a very normal type of beach sand. Perhaps you remember my video about glass production and how glass is actually also made from sand. But the sand required and the mineral required to make glass are much more particular and it's, it's a very specific kind of sand and kind of mineral and um, silicone and what requires, the kind of sand that requires to make silicone is much more abundant as a resource, although it is not, you know, infinite. Sand is not infinite. And with massive or extreme amounts of production of silicone, we can see in the future residing coastlines or problems with natural habitats because sand is lacking in a lot of places, which I also talked about with the glass production. Isolating silicon from silica is the first step in the production of silicone. And this is done by heating a large volume of quartz sand to temperatures as high as 1800 celsius. This results in pure isolated silicon. Again the same with glass production when you have to heat something into very high temperatures it often requires fossil fuels and if you perhaps saw that video I mean you might as well now <laughs> or maybe you don't have to now because I'm explaining a lot of it okay but with glass production as with silicon production these furnaces that have these really really high temperatures are never ever turned off but they are continuously forever running on fossil fuels a lot of them at least and the reason why they're not turned off is because if you have to get a furnace to 1800 degrees it takes a lot of energy so it's actually more energy efficient to just keep it running and when you turn it off you're going to you know like take it all down and completely demolish the furnace um, so for as long as the furnace is running it's going to be turned on 
there's that. And the thing with silicone production is actually that in order to make silicone, you have to take these materials and minerals through a like long process of heating and reheating. So they are not going into a really warm furnace just once, they're going to go into it several times. And that's just something to keep in mind. It's one of those like really invisible uh, impacts of a production of a certain product is how it's produced. And if it needs high temperatures, it often requires fossil fuels. When making silicone, the extracted silicon has to pass through some hydrocarbons and afterwards it's mixed with other chemical compounds. Some of these are derived from fossil materials, aka plastic. Also because silicone is a synthetic elastomer, or elastic polymer, it does not break down in nature, it is not biodegradable, even though it's derived from sand. But all the chemical compounds and the processes it's going through and the extracted silicon means that it is no longer a part of nature. And it's the same thing, you know, with glass, like it takes a million years for glass to break down. In a lot of sustainability communities, I'm seeing a lot of hype of uh, silicone because it's derived from sand and we often focus a lot on that specific fact because it sounds really really good so i would really really like to see some more transparency and some more critique towards silicone within our community which is also why i'm making this video this is not an anti silicone video it's simply just i really want people to have all the facts also the bad things so that's kind of what we're doing here one of the reasons, however, why silicone is often regarded as a better product than plastic, although they are both not biodegradable and they both, in one extent or another, contain fossil materials, whereas, you know, plastic is 100% fossil materials and only a very small percentage of, if, of silicone is, is fossil materials. But one of the main differences between these two is that silicone does not leak chemicals into your food. And the thing is, with a lot of plastic, when you put hot things into it or when you use it to cook and you expose it to higher temperatures, the plastic is going to react and it's going to release harmful chemicals and carcinogens into your food. Stuff like styrofoam, which is funny because it's something that we use a lot in takeaway as a takeaway container. And the thing is, when you put something that's warm on styrofoam, it's going to release all kinds of hell. <laughs> Specifically, a lot of chemicals that are known carcinogens, and that's a really, really big problem, as well as phthalates and BPAs. It's just not great. And silicone does actually not do this. However, to this, I would like to add that cheaper made silicone can actually do this as well. Um, so if you have some silicone that is kind of cheap or cheaply made, and I'm going to show you just how it's cheaply made or how you can check it, um, but if that's the case, it can leak chemicals into your food because cheaply made silicone often has synthetic plastic fillers in order for it to become really, really stretchy. So if you are using silicone, I would 100% recommend that you only use food grade silicone or medical grade silicone because those have the highest qualities and that is not the case with these qualities. They won't release all kinds of hell into your food but that is the case with like super super cheap products so buying silicone products that you're going to use in cooking for instance on wish that's a bad idea you can test the quality of a silicone product by twisting or pinching it if the silicone starts to change color then it contains chemical fillers because pure silicone won't change color if you're trying to stretch it out if the silicone has a strange and chemical smell to it i wouldn't use it with the food either I would also like to point out that even with medical grade or food grade quality silicone, you always, always, always have to respect the limitations regarding temperature. When you get a, for instance, a silicone baking mat that I do have myself, it will often say that it will only be able to work until I think it reaches a point of 300 Celsius and never ever ever go beyond that limit because then there is a chance that it's going to react in a negative way, it's going to release chemicals. Um, so just be really really sure to uh, respect the limitations that is provided on the packaging of the product. You may also be surprised to learn that silicones are found in aerosols like furniture polish and in personal care products like deodorant and makeup and lotions and sunscreen. Using silicone outside your body and even like on the surface of your body, like for instance a menstrual cup, is A-OK. -okay. But it's a whole different situation if silicone is absorbed in your blood. That is not something that you want. Silica, which is often an ingredient in many, many different kinds of beauty products and lotions, is actually a known carcinogen. And you do not want that in your deodorant or in your lipstick. Not at all. Some of the more common silicone products that I personally also use myself are my stasher bags and a menstrual cup. 
Both of these products are made from silicone and in both cases they replace a plastic product that is even worse than its alternative. The menstrual cup can be used for up to 6 years with proper maintenance and I guess the stasher bags can last even longer. My silicone baking mat is a reusable alternative to baking sheets which are often unfit for recycling and unfit for composting. So, recycling. Technically and in theory, silicone is fully recyclable. But as we also know with a lot of other products, that doesn't actually mean a lot unless there is the option to recycle it, which is something that is very, very, very rare. For instance, the case with bioplastic, which is another video that I made that I also want you to see if you're interested in that kind of thing. But bioplastic is also fully recyclable. But the recyclability is 100% dependent on the availability of a recycling station. I hope that sentence makes sense. There is definitely an easier way to say that. If a product is recyclable, is not necessarily a theoretical question but it is a question of is there a place in which you can recycle it okay places that offer silicone recycling are very very rare the reason why that is is because it often requires a specific facility and it's often outsourced to private companies so the availability of silicone recycling is often something that is more available to larger companies that does it all the time and not necessarily the individual consumer who broke their silicone baking sheet however TerraCycle has a mail out service called the zero waste kitchen box where you can ship your broken silicone and then they will ship it to recycling for you which is kind of neat it's not necessarily the most um, both economically and like shipping wise most sustainable option but if you're a lot of people that go together and you like organize a group where everyone from multiple households have something to recycle then it suddenly makes a lot more sense either way I will leave a link down below if you want to read more about that option it's lucky that most silicon products are not disposable because then the recyclability issue would be a lot worse for the most part if you do have silicon products at home you can either upcycle them and you can you know like cut them into smaller pieces and use them in the bottom of your pots for drainage systems and stuff like that. Definitely look at ways to use broken silicone in your home rather than simply tossing it in the trash because yeah not everyone can recycle it. I would however also just advise you to if you are living nearby a recycling plant or if you are in contact with your local recycling opportunity then definitely reach out to them and ask them if that is something that they offer. If they don't offer it then it's kind of good that you ask them because then that will create demand if more people do that um, and if they do offer it then you learn something new and then you have that option as well so yeah just um always talk and ask your local recycling facility what they actually recycle and offer because it does differ a lot from area to area city to city country to country but the question that we have all been waiting for with that i kind of like throughout this video answer a little bit but we're going to recap now is silicone sustainable how eco-friendly is it and where it falls on the sustainability spectrum varies a lot and asking different people will give you different answers obviously i think there are pros and cons that are leaning in both directions it's a great thing that we have a stretchy reusable product that has a base derived from natural materials sand but it does come with ingredients derived from fossil materials aka plastic so saying that it's a 100% natural material is not really right but it's definitely better than plastic both in terms of chemical leakage and in terms of production because it's less plastic than 100% plastic if you catch me drift. Of course very little silicone is recycled but on the other hand very little plastic is being recycled as well. The global average recycling rate for plastic is around 9 to 11% recycling which is very underwhelming and not a lot. So if you can replace some plastic products that you would otherwise have recycled after one or two uses with a reusable silicone product, that is definitely a better and more sustainable option. Where I personally stand on this is that I have a couple of silicone products at home. I have my menstrual cup, I have my baking sheets, I have my stasher bags, and that's kind of it. If I'm looking for a reusable alternative to plastic, I will go for other materials before I go to silicone. I will go for wood materials, I would go for glass materials, I would go for metal materials because those have a higher recycling rate and I know exactly where to put them if they should break. And that is not necessarily the case for my silicone products that I will cherish and maintain as well as I can so I don't have to recycle them right away. 
and that is that is how I kind of feel about this is that it's completely okay to have a silicone product but I would lean towards other products before going in that direction and not replace all your things with sustainable silicone alternatives I would look at other materials like something that has a high recycling rate before I go there so I hope that this video was helpful or informative in any way, shape or form. Thank you to you guys who suggested that I talked about silicone because obviously this is a really, really great topic and really topical in the sense that a lot of silicone products are being promoted at the moment. If you have anything that you would like for me to talk about in this series of is it sustainable, how is it made kind of thing, then leave a comment and let me know what you think would be fun to watch. I already have a bamboo video in the works, so that's going to be out as well. But I hope that you have an amazing day. Take really good care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!